In Boca. Chats with Lily Khan. Ever since Aaliyah Lee Khan made me her fried PB&J. We're going to make my version of a fried PB&J, except that there is no peanut butter or jelly in this. She's become one of my absolute favorite people in the world and is so very talented. A writer of exotic cookbooks, a prominent superstar TV chef, and even the curator of a new food-inspired preschool brand, this multicultural powerhouse has always inspired me to think outside the lunchbox. So I was very excited to hear what she's discovered in the new normal. So let's get into it. Aaliyah, how are you? I haven't talked to you in a long time. I know. It's been a long, long time. I feel like it, the last time we talked, we were texting and you, we were like in Japan at the same time. But yeah. Like, parts. Like, <laughs> like, <we're gone>. yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That was a while ago. Yeah, you were living down in Soho. Yeah, I was. I was. I was. Um, but I've been in uh, I've been in Brooklyn for the last six years now. You digging it? You finding all your shops there, all your foods? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, this, we moved into a house that we had been doing construction on for a number of years. So that felt really good. So we've actually been here almost two years. And That's so you know, it feels almost immediately just because we were always in this neighborhood. We're in Clinton Hill, Fort Greene. Like I've always, I love like the green grape provisions. I get everything from there. But I was watching in the movie and I used to go to Pino's. Oh, uh, you know the oh, Pinos. Sullivan. Yes. That was, was like, that no. Spot. Was that no. Can't yeah, argue. Yeah. The best. Those kids yeah. are the best. Yeah, that was my spot. So I, I reminisced when I was watching your movie. It's good. Well, they'll always be there. They've been there for 100 years, and they'll hopefully be there 100 years more. So Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Well, let me dive into some questions, if that's okay. cool. Um, Let's go. What have you been doing in your quarantine time? Have you started any new projects or... So I would say one kind of the delicate balance since, since we actually filmed together years ago, I've had two children. So I have a six year old and a one year old. That's a recipe. And that's, that's a big dish. Yes. Yeah. It's, you know, it's a lot. Um, and when uh, you can put a six year old kind of, she's in virtual school, there are things, but a one year old, it's just with, what the baby needs, the baby needs. So, you know, just sort of ba balancing that family working from home, which is, you know, a tough, a tough new frontier. Sure. Um, and kind of all the things like the trappings that go along with being quarantined. It's been, it's been kind of a crazy time. Yeah. Um, but I will say that one of the things I've been super excited about uh, a couple of years ago, I launched an app called Issa's Edel Adventures. Yeah. It's about teaching kids about world culture through food, through this sort of gamification. And it's all based on the central character of Issa, who's a multiracial child of a chef um, and is based on my daughter. And so now I'm working with a company in Cantos. Um, they actually have an amazing property. They created this amazing property called Canticos. That's like the number one bilingual nursery brand in there on Nick Jr., but they're uh, helping to build Issa out into a full-fledged thing. This sounds awesome. It's like a yeah. door of the explorer, but with food, huh? Exactly. Or even like a doc, like the, the food ambassador, the way that Doc McStuffins is an ambassador for like health and wellness. Gotcha. I, would say. The food um, I felt like that character was missing. And so I, I created it. I love this. I love yeah, that it's... food is like become such a mainstream and important part of everyone's culture, even kids' culture. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And what better way to learn about people's similarities and differences than through food? Totally. Food never lies. I mean, that's what I loved about these cookbooks and cookbooks in general. Like they're, uh, they're not affected by politics or yeah. history. Like the food of a region won't lie. Like that is cemented with the people, like what the people are, what the culture is, the food represents that without any kind of uh, coloring or shading. So. Absolutely. And I, you know, just to go into that, I was loving when you were kind of going through what those cookbooks were and, um, the stories behind them, the fact that they had advertisements in there and poetry. And I mean, they're so cool. I loved it. I thought that yeah. was so cool. What they, you can't even call them cookbooks. They're like, I don't even know what they are. They're not encyclopedias. They're, they're wild. They're magic. I just <laughs> adore, I adore them. Look at them behind me. This I, <laughs> I love this background. <laughs> but you don't want to see what's actually back there. The <laughs> bodies are piling up. It's, it's bad. News. Um, so let me ask you, like during the quarantine, this quarantine, has it changed your relationship with food in any weird or strange way? It has, because I think, you know, um, I think it's really putting my, my chef skills to the test to try and 
create meals for my family time constrained and kind of using, I, I'm using things I never used before, like kind of already made things like I would have slow cooked my own marinara sauce. And now I'm like, Reos, let's go. Like, you know, yeah. there's, there's some places like that, that where I'm taking those shortcuts. Um, but I think honestly, there's been sort of this arc of like panic. Can I feed everybody and have everything done? And now I'm reaching a point where I'm like, Ooh, my Sunday meal, I get to like slow down and go back to that kind of like lovely. Uh, yesterday I did these, these lamb chops and I made my husband, it was our wedding anniversary on Saturday. I made him kind of a West Indian style shrimp curry with all these vegetables and a lot of these yeah. vegetables were frozen, you know, kind of what I had. And, um, I was about to make roti and then he was like, please just <laughs> stop, have a drink. And I was like, a break. <laughs> so yeah so that was kind of you know I'm, I'm getting back to that um to doing it for the fun of it and not sure. doing it for the process of it which you know as a no, chef you're always doing right like you're I, always doing. I, yeah I totally hear you I think everyone was kind of thrown for a loop and it's like oh I gotta cook all the time now and like what's gonna happen and you know now that we're kind of getting in the routine I mean I think about my mother a lot like how did she do this every single night like, yes. but it's, you know, you get into a routine, you understand how much time it's going to take for everything and like what you have available. It's, it's, it's wild how we can adapt so quickly, I think, uh, yeah. or at least our stomachs can, you know? Oh, for sure. And I think that scarcity, that availability of ingredients also kind of played into that panic of like, you know, cause I'm trying to cook for my family. I'm also trying to do some recipe ideation and videos for both right. Real Eats, which is sort of my my day job, chief culinary officer of Real Eats, a food, we do meal delivery. So you can imagine we're up so much right now yeah. during this time. And then also for Issa, um, and kind of that shuffle is really kind of, I, I'm starting to get into a groove now where I'm not so good. <laughs> yeah, just when we got it, they're going to change everything again. Oh, and, yeah. yeah, That's how things are going to happen. Sure. Um, so you watched the film, I'm interested to know what you thought about it and, you know, what you thought of us as non-chefs cooking? So I have to say one, um, I just told my daughter that I was, I was doing this to please stay out of this room. And I was like, do you want a snack? And she's like, I want the rice balls. Of course, <laughs> the best. She has good taste. They're amazing. I was like, later, later, later. Okay. So I'll do this. <laughs> she's like, wait, why have you not done these for me? Uh, sorry. <laughs> um, and I love that style of rice ball specifically, the non-meat, like the pure... Yes rice balls. I visited Italy um, when I was in college and I ate those every day. Yeah, like every it's day. a staple. Fantastic. Um, I thought it was amazing. I think that, you know, coming, being in a profession where sort of precision and kind of following the same thing over and over and over again is the goal. Yeah. Me as an actual cook and not as a chef role, what I love is that nuance. I love the home cook. I love the the other the interpretation, the reinterpretation of what the directions are to because I think that's style. To me, right. that's style, and that's what you taste in people's food, and that's what memories are created from, not from kind of following the same thing every single time. Yeah. You know? So I actually loved it. I thought you guys did an awesome job. Um, that pork milanese was just killing me. I was like. I'll make it for you one day. I, I like promise. The meat. I yeah. was like, oh, please. More <laughs> butter. <laughs> Rivers of butter. Yeah. It was so good. Um, yeah, I thought you guys did an incredible job. And I think that this, the story arc was really nice. So I'm really excited to hear from you, actually, kind of what then what is to come on this. Because I think that it's just such a fantastic, conceptually, it's so fantastic. There's such realness to what you guys were doing yeah. and, and your travels there and all that, which was super cool. Um, yeah. Well, it's been really great. I mean, considering we really did it just to, to do something, you know, we're going to make this crazy dinner. I was like, well, I'm going to have to photograph this. Like, you know, yeah. that's my job. That's what I contribute to our friendship and our group. <laughs> so, the guy with the camera, that's me. And um, yeah, it was just made out of pure, you know, passion or love for eating and, and culture. And um we had a lot of time on our hands afterwards. So I had time to edit and make it like something special. And everyone's been really cool, like very supportive. Um, the internet can be a scary place. People can find things that they can hate on for no good reason. But yep. generally I would say like, everyone's been like, this, this is good, this is real. And we don't see any artifice in it. And uh, a lot of good things have come out of it. I've, I've been able to connect with a lot of 
chefs and just people that I love and haven't talked to and got to ask like, you know, pretty important questions and that everyone's dealing with, but no one's really talking about. And then we've had other people say like, we want to make this bigger and turn it into a series, either in Italy or in New York and just keep going at it, like do different dishes, different cultures, because the reason why we live in New York or why I love it so much is that you can go anywhere in the world just by changing your neighborhood. Like Absolutely. Queens is the most diverse place in the world. 800 langu- languages spoken. You can find the absolute best specialty markets from any corner of the world, no matter what you want to eat, you know? And you can literally go on a trip just by walking down the block, which I think is a really cool thing to, to kind of share with the world because I think you can do that in a lot of places and people just don't take advantage of it, you know? So you don't need to jump on a plane. You can just go out your door and, you know, see what you find. So it's been great. All in all, it's been great. And like just really loving, loving the process and loving the, the people that have brought together through the, through the project. Oh, for sure. And I think obviously the, the goal and the give back to, to Italy is, is super important right now. I mean, we're all living this and, um, you know, this COVID life. And I, I think that that's really, it's an amazing, it's amazing. It's a no brainer to be honest with you. I mean, they got hit so hard and like when we were editing, that's when that was happening the worst. So it was like really influencing everything. We were looking at all these dishes and these books and they were talking about all the, the beautiful culture. And we're like, God, this is so sad that the place where this is from is just getting destroyed. Like, and yeah. everyone has it bad. So it's weird to say, oh, we're going to focus on Italy. Like everyone needs help. But, you, you know, for us, this was important to, to do for them. And, you know, for whatever it generates, it's, it's going to be a plus, you know? Yeah, it's awesome. That's so the last question I have for you for this little casual interview is like, do you love Italy and why? Oh, I do. I love Italy. Actually, I had a trip planned in June um, for a wedding yeah. in Capri that obviously got canceled. And I had been so looking forward to going because I had never been to that area. You know, I've been more north, but I, I've never really done the coast. And um, I was really excited. Are they going to do it again or? I think, well, sure. I just don't know. I don't think they know when. I don't think any of us know when. Right. It'll, it'll be a time for us all to be flying and, and doing it. But um, right. I, I'm looking forward to the day when we, we do get back because, you know. But yes, from a food, I think I love Italy, obviously, for all of its rich culture. I mean, food is sort of a no-brainer, you know, part of it and, and an obvious part of it. But there's just so much there's so much to offer and the people and, um, and I'm going to be asking your advice for places to go and, and places to visit when I go back. Listen, I'm, I'm all over that. I love when people ask advice. It's like my reason for being, and <laughs> if, if you're into the cutlet, uh, Peter and I have designed, I'm going to say the best cutlet crawl in Milan. Um, Ooh. Our limit is five. We can't get past five in one day. <laughs> it's, it's a marathon. But like when it comes to cutlets, there's a lot to know in Milan. So I can definitely lend some light uh, in the situation. I can't wait. I, I literally can't wait. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's fantastic. I'm so glad uh, we got to talk. And it sounds like you're doing great. Congratulations on your new home. Uh, you. And congratulations that both your children are thriving. <laughs> um, and I'm really excited <laughs> for this new project. <laughs> yeah. Um, this new project sounds really cool. And I'm dying to check it out. So let's have some rice ball soon. Thanks. Definitely. We definitely have to do that. I would love that. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, take care. It was a yeah, t- so good to see you. you. Bye. Bye. 20 rare cookbooks, four tasty dishes, two best friends. Watch the film, see the books, help Italy recover. Get hungry at italyandboca.com.